happy Saturday, Saturday, <laughs> can I start that again? Hello, happy Sunday afternoon or morning or evening or whatever it is in your side of the world. Oh, the dogs are misbehaving already. Um, <clears throat> I hope you've had or are going to have a fantastic Sunday and a great week. I see we already have Wendy in the chat. So for those of you who don't know, Wendy has been trying to figure out the chat for a wee while. So it's awesome to have you here. Um, oh, wow. I've I'm a little bit flustered just now because I was running a bit late because I was playing with the dogs in the park and um, Mia <clears throat> is a little bit on the stinky side, <laughs> just mud, she's not rolled in anything terrible. And here we have Magdalena, hi there, she's just over from Drew's um, British Cooks last live stream, I meant to, hang on, I will just do this. If you haven't, when you're finished here, if you want to pop over to um, Drew, his live stream's just finished, but you're about to catch the replay, and he just made rock cakes, which are a British classic. Um, yeah, before I get started, I should explain what we're going to do. So, hi, I'm Pam Duffy. I'm here to help you help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. And today, what we're going to be looking at, I've got a few things, if I remember to get them all in. First of all, I want to show you all a little felting method that I believe it was Wendy was asking about in Pam's Felting Friends group. We want to see how that works on the webcam, if you can actually see what I'm doing and I don't manage to stab myself. Uh, then I've got a live shop review for a wonderful shop for us to look at. Um, and we want to look at what I've been doing for my love a loser for the week. And if any of you want to pop in, if you're loving your loser, and hi, Mary, um, if you're loving loving your loser, the item in your shop that's from my Monday's um, video. And then finally, we've got a bit of swearing in Scottish. Um, <laughs> Those of you in my group, I think most of you here just now are in my group, I'll know what I'm talking about, but we want to have a little, going to have a little chat about some of the origins of some, of a saying that I accidentally slipped out in a live stream and how it can be a little bit, how, how the extended version of the saying can be a little bit rude. So I'm going to teach you a Scottish, a Scottish swear word that all of you guys, especially from America, this is a word that's totally normal for you guys, but don't say it if you come to the UK. It doesn't mean the same thing at all. So that's <clears throat> that's what we've got planned for, for today. And as usual, our, our little chat and probably listening to me drink coffee. I have given up coffee. I'm down to about two or three cups a week now. So I'm not, I'm making sure... I don't want to waste, <laughs> I don't want to waste this one, so I'm still in savouring it. This is my only cup for today, but I needed it. Like I say, we we're out playing with the dogs in the rain, so if me and the dogs look a bit bedraggled, that's why. And I lost track of time, and I only got in like about 15 minutes ago. Managed to watch Drew's, Drew's video, um, managed to catch the end of it, his... Um, rock cakes. I've not had rock cakes for years. Oh yeah, before we get started, I meant to say this. I'd mentioned on his page, um, we were talking about rock cakes and obviously a lot of people don't know what they are, but um, it's something I actually want as... I, I always joke and Terry Pratchett, the author, he talks about sort of battle cooking, like drop scones that you attack people with and things. And I always think of rock cakes as battle items. But for real, many, many years ago, when we were in school, one of my friends got her rock cakes diffused, or I believe it was a controlled explosion by the bomb squad. Because <laughs> um, what happened, there was, at the school she was at, they were, it was in their home economics class, they were cooking and they just made rock scones. And there was a bomb threat called into the school, which is not common and obviously very scary. And so everyone was evacuating and she accidentally dropped her bag with the rock cakes 
in the science lab in the total wrong place where no one would expect it to be so of course the bomb squad come out and they've been told you know there's look out for anything suspicious so a bag of baking in the science class was considered suspicious and they I can't remember if they tried to defuse or if they did a small controlled explosion but her her rock cakes were destroyed and her family couldn't get any for the evening meal so that that was where that story came from anyway Excuse me, and excuse me, Mia. So, I think it was you, Mary. I can't remember it just now. My memory is shocking. But someone in my Pam's Felting Friends Facebook page was asking about. I've just dropped my needle on the dog the wrong way up, so it didn't hurt her. Was asking about getting sticky up fuzzy hair on a dog. So this is not the exact same breed of dog um, that they were working on, but it's a similar kind of idea. So yeah, that's kind of showing up. So I just wanted to attempt to show you what I do to get slightly more sticky up rough, rough hair. This is just something I've been doing more recently than how in my long hair video, how I tend to do it. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting strips of fleece. This is the World of Wool um, Merino Lightning. Totally loving it just now. So I cut lengths about twice of what I want to be. And instead of putting on a full strip, I'll just take off small pieces. Right, this is going to be so awkward to do, but we're going to try it. You take off a small piece of your fleece and roll it a little bit in the middle to bring it together and then I'm going to put that piece onto the dog oh this is so awkward and then felt into the middle of this piece so it's embedded into the dog and then I'm going to fold it one way oh can you all see this is so much easier to do in a tutorial with a good camera so you fold it over and just felt slightly just like a millimeter into the fold so that this edge is held down and then fold it the other way and felt that way as well so you've got a kind of thick root and this little clump of hair and then you'll just do the same and add more clumps in the thickness that you think you need and this gives a more kind of stand up -y fur and you can even change the direction that you're putting these down in so like I'm um, I'm laying the fur out in that direction and then felting it you could put it in any kind of direction but just pop it in, fold and felt in one direction, fold and felt in the other, obviously spend a bit more time than I'm doing and do it in a place where you can actually see what you're doing but I don't know if that shows up but that gives you some standy up slightly more bonkers looking fur. So I hope that helped a little bit to just demonstrate it's not the easiest thing in the world to to actually talk about, to, to just explain in typing. So I just wanted to show you kind of what I was doing, just like that, but just do it better. Okay, so I want to do just a quick look at this shop now. Uh, make sure and remember and share my screen all right I hope you can all see this <laughs> um oh hi Drew Drew's here but not not here sorting through boxes is that a poodle um yeah Drew's uh, Drew's moving moving house um Drew yeah according to Brian that is a poodle because Brian Brian G Johnson for those who don't know we're we're all in his um YouTube group um and basically every dog that Brian sees he considers is a poodle so yeah every time I post a picture of my dogs he'll just say poodle like no really not a poodle <laughs> it's a Mia um but yeah how's the move going Drew how are you getting on with that I've not moved house in 18 years and really I, I think I would need a skip and an industrial flamethrower to sort out my house to, to get moving. Uh, Wendy, you are most welcome. I'm glad that made some kind of sense and I didn't stab anybody. Extreme Food Reviews, hi there. It's definitely not a rock cake, that's for sure. <laughs> that's, it's a dog, not a rock cake. Uh, right, so getting on to this shop. 
Karina Photography. Now, Karina is one of my Patreons. Um, she's she's my first in our top top tier where I give a little extra help out to to shops and everything. What me is now playing with a squeaky toy. Apologies for that. Um, but basically, what what's happened is. Karina has a fantastic shop that's been doing really well, and unfortunately, she's um, she's one of the, one of the people that just now her sales have quite plummeted. But she's doing the right thing. So many people, when this happens, and I did it myself in what was it, twenty ten, when my sales totally dropped. Your head goes down. You have this massive pity party. You totally feel sorry for yourself. And you blame Etsy and you say it's all their fault. She's not doing that. She's doing the right thing. And she's saying, my sales have dropped. Why can people help me? So really awesome. And she asked me if I can have a look. She's supporting me on Patreon. So we're all going to have a look and just check the chat again. Um, <laughs> Extreme food reviews. Don't get Drew started on his move. On his move, it deserves its own channel. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Um, I don't know if you guys follow my Virgin Kitchen. I think he's not that far away from you, Barry. I think he's not that far away from you, Drew. But they're also just moved house as well, and they're doing a blog on the house move, which is kind of interesting. I think once you've followed someone for a while, they become a bit of a personality, and it's nice to see behind the scenes. Um, the Je Jega, Jek, I'm not saying that right, um, but hello, hello Sweden, and hello from Scotland, if those of you don't know. Right, let's get on to Karina, I'll just scroll down a wee bit. Um, and she's, she's also worried that her shop's not, her, her items are not that popular but I really think that this is a fantastic shop and I hope you'll all agree with me. Um, she lives in Paris and she's a photographer so she's and also travels around a bit mainly in Europe and stuff as well and I think she's got a fantastic eye but her shop is photographs from Paris, uh, travel photography and wall tapestries of all her pictures that as a professional photographer she's taken and I think in in my mind if you're decorating a house you know like like Drew if you're moving to a new house but um a lot of people like this kind of trendy artwork on their walls like pictures of aspirational pl places and stuff and what's going to be better to have something that you've got mass produced from some shop down the road or actually buy them from the photographer who lives in the place I think if I had more walls, I, I've kind of filled all my walls in my house up just now, but I think I think it's a fantastic thing and the wall tapestries really intrigue me. Uh, Barry is awesome, totally agree Drew, he's great fun. And I did I did think of like you guys moving at the same time and everything, maybe you'd like live in his basement or something weird. Um, Anyway, so Karina's photography, I think she also has a great eye and some lovely colours. So, um, and all that seems to have, no, I won't say all that seems to have happened. She's kindly let me have a look, more dig into her stats and everything, which is so exciting. I love to be able to do that. I love to see stats. Um, so we're seeing just... It seems at a quick glance just now that one of the things that's happened... Um, one of the things that's happened is she's dropped off of a popular search term, which happens to all of us. I think we do well because we're on the first page for a certain search term, and then the algorithm changes slightly, or Etsy changes who's at the front, just as we experiment. It's like A-B testing. They go, is this person better than this person? So they switch around who gets to the front page, and if that other person does better than you, then unfortunately you might drop down the rankings. So she's dropped away from a, a first page. I think she's down to... I can't remember, I'll lie if I tell you just now. But she's dropped down, and her popular search term was tapestry wall... Tapestry wool tapestry. Well, not only can I not type, as Drew will tell you, I, I typed rubbish on his um, on his live stream. Not only can I not type, but I still can't speak. Sundays are bad days. Um, so 
hopefully we're going to boost up this um, wall hanging, um, this wall tapestry, because I think it's beautiful. Um, Mana, oh I'm not going to speak, Manarola, I believe that's a village in Spain and it looks absolutely beautiful and it's quite, it's obviously quite a popular touristy place to photograph um, and I think she's got one of the better pictures of this um, can we just, oh. no I'm not going to search in her shop anyway but if you search for Manor, Manarola, sorry Spanish people but if you search for, for that as photography I think she's got one of the best pictures out there of it so it's awesome um, so we're going to work on that and also I think the colours are great. I love I love purple. So that's mainly purples and blues. I think that's an awesome colour. Um, checking chat again. I want to keep remembering to check chat and not just be gabbing on. Um, extreme food reviews. You learn a lot when you look at someone's back end. I hope that doesn't get us demonetised. Hopefully we can... Oh, see when you say stuff in your head and it's totally wrong. Hopefully we can sneak in a wee back end. No, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, I've just got myself demonetized. No, hopefully you, um, YouTube doesn't understand the, the British, the British things here. Um, but absolutely, yes. There's there's so much more to learn. Like I can do a lot looking at your shops as it is. And Etsy Rank for those of you selling online, Etsy Rank is the best tool. I absolutely love it for diving in, getting stats, finding out where you're ranking. Uh, for you YouTube people, Etsy ranks your equivalent to morning fame. So if you're on YouTube and you're looking to look at your, your stats, morning fame's great. Etsy rank is the equivalent for Etsy. It gives you so much data that helps and I can even dig in and get some data from other people's shops. But actually being able to look in and that's the thing, if your sales drop, if your views drop, on any platform, if things drop, go into your analytics and look at what it was saying when you were doing well. When you were flying, when everything was great, where was, where, can't speak, where was all the views coming from? Was it a certain search term? Was it a certain web page? And then look now and find out, have I dropped, am I no longer on the front page of that search term? Has that web page moved on to something else? And that gives you an idea how you can get yourself back up there. Von Frieda Suzanne, hello, finally worked out how to join. Thank you so much, good to see you. And welcome everyone who's new. Um, again, as I already said, we're having a wee look at this Karina phot Photography Etsy shop and then we're going to have a wee look at Love a Loser and then I'm going to teach you all how to swear in Scottish, so stick around. And if you're on the replay, if there's any of this you're not interested in, just skip to the next bit. Um, so, scrolling down, first look at the shop. I think the banner is good. It show, it's obviously a bit of the Eiffel Tower and stuff, but I think Karina has much better pictures that could show that better. I don't know, maybe the Eiffel Tower in sunset with a bit more. But it's good. It's it's not the best. Um, Avatar picture, her taking a picture. Lovely blues and purples and pinks. Love that. And the little logo, fantastic, simple, beautiful, can't complain about that. Uh, Karina photography, Paris photography, travel photography and wall tapestries. That's clear, that's a really good niche. Um, you know, we know exactly what we're getting. It's not photography and baby hats and 40 other different things. We know exactly what this is and that's perfect. Um, I like the featured items, they're all purple on both ends, works for me, but it gives a good a good view of a range of things. Um, snowfall in Paris, lovely. Camels in Egypt, fantastic. I would love to go to Egypt. And just the lavender field, which is beautiful as well. So great job with the beginnings of the shop. If anything, as I'm scrolling down here, if anything catches your eye, don't forget 
to let us know what's catching your eye and what's looking the best as well. That helps everybody. We can all work on what are the kind of eye-catching pictures. That's such an important thing for all of us with with thumbnails in anything because the internet is such a visual place. So it's good to know what it is that's catching people's eye. Um, so the sections in the shop, Paris photography, Italy and Greece, USA, Morocco, Cuba, travel photo prints and wall tapestries. Loving those sections. That actually has me wanting to dig in and have a good nosy around. Um, for me, obviously, the photography is going to be great because this is a photography type shop. But I think, I think there's a lovely... Um, what I'm seeing so far on the screen here as well is it's not just niche down into travel photography but I think Karina has a real theme, a real style in her own photography by the looks of things. It's the gentle colours, purples, turquoise, blues, pinks, a lot of white which is making for a really attractive looking shop just to see all as a whole as well as just finding one individual picture and loving the little car in the Havana photography very cute and yeah a lot of this would make beautiful wall art in your house um, and also I'll have to nosy at how big these wall tapestries are because these would be awesome backdrops for YouTube as well if you want just a little something different because I've actually got my needle felting station uh, which is a tiny corner of my kitchen I can't remember if I've shown you this but literally what you see I have my little bit of wall behind me and I've got like the end of my table I've got about three foot and that's my felting space for filming in and the backdrop I've got is just a, a vinyl a photography vinyl from eBay which was about eight pounds which is fantastic um, but again some of these might be pretty cool as well as a background and uh, Wendy's saying loving the lavender field and the cottage yep the lavender field was stunning I think that would make a great kind of hall picture or something and the cottage the cottage the cottage I'm moving too quick but anyway some very cool pictures here British cook it all looks very pretty it does it is very stylized, you know, a very individual style, I think. He, he would go where I'm doing the stopping talking and just drooling over things. And I should, I didn't put a link to her shop up, did I? But I should do that. So remember and check out her shop. The link will be there in the replay as well. So nip over and check out her shop. As I say, we're trying to work together to improve this because her sales have dropped. But I think this is a very beautiful shop and there's no reason why they shouldn't pick up again. At the minute, like I say, as far as I can see, it just seems to be a drop out of search. But I've got to dig around a little bit better. That's just on a... Extreme Food Reviews was just going to ask for the link. I, I remember some stuff eventually. Um, but yeah, really nice shop. So if you want to give her a wee bit of love. And I think the photography, right, I'm just going to click into this. This is such a cute little doorway, actually. Um, Paris in Spring. Um, so... What size? Oh, lots of different print sizes. 5 by 7 up to 24 by 36. That's reasonably good size. And yeah, so the drop down for all of them. That's fantastic. Oh, saying the page can't be found. That's a pain. Um, right, how can I share this? Here. Huh. Well, it's Karina Photography on Etsy anyway. Um, can I just copy the words and then if you search for them that should happen. 
it would explain a drop in sales if you can't find the shop. Yep, so if you search for that, it should hopefully turn up, but that's a bit of a pain. Or let's let's go back to the shop. If I just copy that bit of it. Let's see if that works. It looks like it should, but that's a pain, yeah. If we can't find her if we can't find her shop, then she can't sell anything. Uh but yeah, scrolling through them all so gorgeous and I think some of these like just a backdrop with little chairs or with the Eiffel Tower and all sorts of things. These would make really quite cool photography well video backdrops for certain things sorry try and scroll, scroll slower I'm gonna make you all ill Extreme Food Reviews has found it awesome thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much for trying um, yeah I don't want to test links when I'm looking at things so yeah thanks for letting me know there right I just wanna I can't not scroll quickly, so sorry, while I'm doing this, just close your eyes, guys. Um, so I just want to scroll down and look at the rest of the shop. Um, full five-star reviews, which are fantastic. There's nothing wrong there. Uh, shop updates, fantastic. For those of you on Etsy, this is using the Sell on Etsy app. It lets you do some updates. Ah, I found it by taking the UK part out. Of course, if I'm sharing a link from UK and you're not in the UK, that's such a pain, but I'll thank you. I'll have to remember that. Um, so yeah, if you've got the sale on Etsy app, you can add little pictures and stories and link them to items in your shop, which is fantastic. It's it's getting better now that it because it only runs off your off your phone, you can't take pictures like off your camera but now that phone cameras are getting so much better it's so much easier I used to take nice pictures and then upload them email them to myself and then take them on my phone and then put them in that way which was a total pain in the backside but now if you can take really nice pictures then you can like if you're in the process of making something you can take some pictures along the steps put it up and sell on Etsy as updates and link to the final item once you've got it and then people that are following you get to see it's like a little snapchat story or something um, I, mean, I see these are like a couple of year old but I can't comment because I've been really lazy with updating my sell on Etsy as well but it's really really cute because she's got up a picture of um, a fleece blanket with a picture on it with the the actual picture on it um, shown in a fantastic setting and then links to the shop where the picture is which I think is great uh, so these are great and then her about section nicely filled in with a few pictures and yeah if you haven't put stuff in your about section get on to that with a photography shop perhaps a video isn't so important but it would still be kind of cool um, she's obviously got a good camera so I would possibly recommend getting out there with with the camera and taking like a three second film of the area just before you take the picture of it and then you can make a video of that you know or get someone to film you taking the picture just a little bit so we get to see get to know you and Paris come to life a little bit I think that would make a really awesome video for your shop introduction um, nice the world is a beautiful place and I want to capture and share it that is perfect. That is lovely. It tells us everything we need to know about your shop, really. And we know about you. You're an American living in Paris and a photographer there. So that is absolutely perfect. Um, so like I say, this is something we're working on a bit deeper with Karina and hopefully we can we can get get this working. Um, as you guys will already know, I will be talking about the titles and tags and everything. It's such most important thing out there. But 
uh, that's the start. Um, I hope you all enjoyed looking at our shop because I think it is a really awesome shop. Right, back to my ugly mug. Um, so what I want to do now is just a quick, for those of you that didn't see my um, video on Monday, Love a Loser Shop, where we've got a wee challenge for the month at looking at an item in your Etsy shop that's not been performing very well and we're just going to spend a month trying to make that item better. So you're taking it, you're showcasing it, you're giving it every chance and if at the end of the month it's not done well then it's out of there. But hopefully most of the time an item doesn't do well because it's not being seen. Not because it's rubbish, not because it's too expensive, but just because it's not being seen. So we're showcasing them and getting them seen. So I've got my little dog that I'm showcasing. Um, I will just pull him up for two seconds. So this little guy last month only got two views which was absolutely rubbish so I have started he's my loser I'm going to showcase him if if this item doesn't get any traction now I'm not necessarily expecting him to sell this is not the point see these these challenges this love a loser anything where you're working hard on your shop sometimes you get immediate results coffee's gone cold now sometimes you get immediate results results but most often what happens is you build up traction you build up a bit of excitement and this keeps on building and building this momentum grows and eventually you get lots of sales so what I do is like running up to the Christmas season September beginning of September to middle of October I work really hard on boosting my shop and then the sales start October to November it's bonkers so you know when you're quiet the work you put in this week you might not see results for a month but the results will come and part of the point of the lo love a loser is you're doing one different thing every day and even if it only takes you like 10 seconds to do this one different thing keeps your shop active and keeps your item active so Etsy goes oh well this is an active shop and you get a little boost in your rankings so just doing that little thing just keeps you in sort of Etsy's mind and you get seen more anyway so what I have done with this guy this month um, most importantly to start with I changed the tags and description and I made the item a featured listing so the title initially of it was not very good SEO and I just wanted to make it far easier to be understood. So the title, back to that, instead of any of these, remember what I say about don't make it look like you're a wish shop, you know, needle felted dog, felt dog, felt dog scope, you know, t filling in as much as you possibly can. But no, I'm focusing down onto the terms I want to rank for. I want to rank for Yorkshire Terrier, Yorkshire Terrier sculpture, and also personalised is pretty good. I get quite a lot of search results for that as well. So my title is personalised Yorkshire Terrier sculpture and that's it. So that was what I changed to to work on for that. Um, and obviously changed my tags and descriptions to fit in with that. Um, now when I started, when I changed that, the dog was nowhere in ranking for Yorkshire Terrier. And Yorkshire Terrier is a medium competition high high activity search so it's a really good one to aim for but I was nowhere for that and just with that change I went straight to page eight which was a good start. Um, the next thing I did was I attempted pop to screen again I attempted to change the listing it was in a sea of everybody's doing beautiful white 
background photography now I just wanted to work on a way for it to stand out a little bit so I tried up in the saturation of the picture a bit and added a red border but that's not all that pretty so I changed it again and went for a much smaller red border more saturation I sharpened up the picture a little bit and added footprints around it paw prints now that's not my idea of cool I don't really like that but it stands out so that's just an experiment to see if it's shown on a page are people gonna is their eye gonna be drawn to it because it's got bright red and it's got different things um, so that's that's what I went with for day two um, day three I took it and pinned on some Pinterest boards and I renewed the listing and on on that day I will show you this on that day as you can see with just all these changes and renewing the listing again that little guy for the term Yorkshire Terrier was ranking on page one now it doesn't last there long just now but this this is just to show the process does work I went from nowhere to page eight and then to page one of the search so you totally can do that uh, And yesterday what I did was I increased the number of listings so rather than just having one one item in that listing I put it up to five items so that means because it's a custom listing if one of them sold then it just automatically relists and that just helps out a little tiny bit um, I relisted again and it was straight back onto page one so that's my my loser and she's doing pretty well so far uh, views are picking up slowly it's gone from two in a month to now it's at about 10 views which isn't massive amount but like I say it's building up gradually and at the minute in time I'm getting to page one but I need to page one for a very short time so I'm trying to be strategic and doing the renewing getting onto page one at round about the time when Etsy is going to be the most busy so quite late in the afternoon in the UK um, Von Frieda what was the title before I changed it I will go and find that out right now I forget but it will be on my on my video so I'll go and find that for you right now I should have taken a note of that I know that um, it was something terrible uh, oh, ah, here we go um, sorry this is a tiny bit of the screen but it was miniature needle felted cat dog or horse of your choice made to order so yeah that was terrible <laughs> and it was picking up in search term as you can see it was picking up some views from people searching for a needle felted cat which it is it's a custom listing for anything but it's much better to be more specific it's going to be a personalized needle felted Yorkshire Terrier <laughs> so there that's the problem I've got um, quite a lot of the listings in my shop are quite old I've got I think I've got about six or seven hundred live and inactive listings so every time I learn more about SEO I don't change them all I change a few and get them ranking and there's always going to be some really terrible ones in my shop <laughs> um, so so I'm very much a case of do as I say not as I do I have some good listings that are doing fantastic and as I've explained in some of my other lives I haven't done so much work on my shop recently because the good ones are doing so well that I just don't have time to do it so I have some terrible listings in my shop I can't deny that 
Um, so this little guy was terrible. I've hopefully made him a little bit better. Oh, something else I forgot to say that I also did with him was I put him as my featured listing in my shop as well um, so that he comes up first. Now, when, when anyone clicks on my shop, this is my shop. Um, he's now here as the featured listing, so he's always going to be at the top. So hopefully anyone coming to my shop gets a chance to look at him as well. So that just boosts that as well. Okay, so I hope that just kind of explained what I'm doing to love love a loser. Like I say, I'm not expecting hundreds of sales. This is the kind of thing, it's literally taking me two minutes a day at the most and that two minutes is far, far better for my shop than me sitting doing three, four, five hours of work on one day and then nothing for the next four months. So it's always better if you can do just a little chipping away at it, just do little things and you'll do so much better. Okay, the bit you've all been waiting for. I, I know you guys, me swearing. <laughs> It's not really swearing, right? But <laughs> I know some of you know what I'm what I'm up to here. And um, yeah, it was Wendy that pointed this out to me. In my Wednesday's video, I'm obviously getting far too comfortable on camera because I said something I hadn't realized I said. I said a saying that's really common in the UK and it never even occurred to me that it's not common in the rest of the world. And oddly enough, I didn't even notice myself saying it. I didn't notice I'd said it when I edited the video. I didn't notice till it was commented on my group. But yes, I said, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> and this, this is a kind of common UK saying and what it means now is, it's just like, you got it, that's how you do it. You know, you'll say, you'll explain, do this, that, and the other thing, and Bob's your uncle. It's as easy as that. You've done it. Um, if anyone, Drew, anyone else, if you can, if you have a better explanation for it. This is the problem with sayings is, you know, when you say them, you don't necessarily know what they mean. But I had a quick search to find out the origins of the name. I've, I've heard from other people, they're saying, I think this, um, America, not America, um, Australia, New Zealand and Canada are a little aware of the saying, but not so much in America. And it turns out with a Google search, this is pretty much what you expect it is. There was an MP who was fairly unqualified, got given a crazy important job. And it turned out that the person who had promoted him was a right honourable Lord something or something or something. But he was also Uncle Robert. Uncle Robert or Uncle Bob to the person that he'd promoted. So it was a kind of cheeky way of commenting on the nepotism to say, well, of course you've got it. Your uncle's Bob, you know, that, if that makes sense. So it was a really sarcastic thing, but now it's just kind of for saying, yeah, that's easy. But the swearing bit, mum's going to be so proud. <laughs> the full of that saying is, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Which there is, I don't know any history of why that extra bit came in. I think it's just, it just did anyway. But it had me thinking, and this is something, if any of you guys are American, I know so many Americans that come over here and don't think about the word right but fanny doesn't mean the same in britain as what it means in the us i can't believe i'm saying this right <laughs> but i just thought that this is my public service announcement do not come here and say the word fanny thinking you're saying bum it's not the same thing and i don't know the history history of the word but yes it, it means a similar part of that anatomy but more on the feminine side but also um i don't know in 
in the rest of the UK, Drew or anyone in, in England or what well, anyone in the rest of the UK is um can you let me know? Do you, you <laughs> sorry I can see you guys laughing. In the rest of the UK, do you actually use the word fanny as like an insult for, for people? Do you call someone a fanny? <laughs> just to, I don't know if this is just Scottish or the rest of the UK, but yeah, I'll just so <laughs> I've explained what the word means to us in the UK. So now that will explain. Now, see the pouch thing that you wear around your waist in the UK. In the UK, we call that belt bag thingy. We call it a bum bag. In the UK, if you Americans come here and call something a fanny pack, we are going to laugh. <laughs> like, because that sounds, that just sounds so wrong. Mary's saying she loves the Iron Brew advert about naming the child Fanny. I've got that playing in my head. It's fantastic. And that's, well, I, while it's a rude word, it's a rude word like you would use the word dick to comment on a male item, a male area of anatomy. I'm trying to do this without getting my video entirely demonetized. <laughs> We're all adults. We know, we know what, we know what I'm talking about. But like, dick's not really a rude word and fanny's the same. It's amusingly a rude word. <laughs> Extreme food reviews. We had a whole era of the US where people were wearing fanny packs. Yes, that's why we Brits find you guys hilarious. <laughs> Can you imagine what we thought you thought you, what we thought you were saying? Yeah, <laughs> this is our public service announcement. But yeah, so it it's a rude word but in a kind of comedy way. So you can call someone a fanny. It's it's even sort of nicer than calling them a dick. It, you would call your mate if they did something stupid. You would say they were a fanny. I'm so sorry, mum, but it's not really rude. Um, or if someone's mucking about, you can say they're fannying about. <laughs> Wendy, yeah, fannies are... I can't believe how many times I'm saying this. Um, it's a politer way to say but. Yeah, <laughs> it really isn't here. Um, but yeah, the Iron Brew advert is hilarious because it's... I can't I can't share it and I don't know if it's a bet anymore, but someone... When you're done here, go and search on YouTube for Iron Brew advert Fanny. And it's just so funny because it's, it's a wee insult and um you know the the wee wife sitting there she's just got her newborn a newborn baby and says they're gonna call gonna call the child fanny and it's like you can't name the baby fanny <laughs> and it's childishly amusing but that that that's it it's like it's a childishly amusing word and it's 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 a very scottish sort of gentle insult so there we go, my public service announcement. I don't believe that I just did that on live stream, but I knew it was going to be a whole lot of fun after our little conversation. If you guys aren't in my group, Pam Duthie's Felting Friends, feel free to join in. You can see the maturity we have in discussions. It's also really supportive, great friendly. If you're an artist, lots of good advice and tips and support especially for needle felters, if you're looking to sell online, or if you just want to talk some absolute random nonsense. Um, I will put a link up to the group, which will hopefully work for people who are not in the UK. Um, Von Frieda, everybody's got a butt, Fanny is female. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a polite way to say it. <laughs> Wendy, sorry, Pam's mum. I know she must be so proud. <laughs> it's also one of these things. I, it's a sort of generational thing. Well, I don't don't know about it in this case. I, this is probably like the first time I've swore in front of my mum or something. But certain swear, certain words that are kind of like really rude a generation ago are a bit humorous just now and are 
like probably not even a big deal to the the next generation down um and it seems right i know like glaswegian we're we're seen as quite aggressive in a lot of things but the swear words are quite often a lot more humorous like um like and i'm not going to say it here because i will get demonetized but a lot of people like go mental for someone dropping that the, the f-bomb but you'll have noticed like especially with billy Connolly, it's it's just a bit naughty it's not quite doesn't have those aggressive connotones and the, was it four weddings and a funeral where the entire first five minutes of the film is using the f word um so so i think yeah it's it sort of means different it's not such aggressive a cup of tea with sugar for mama <laughs> as we are now friends we can call each other fannies can't we mary we absolutely can that's that's it, it it's that kind of friendly insult <laughs> uh mum <laughs> says mum says it was never really a bad word i don't feel so bad now <laughs> thank you it's like I say, it, it's rude, but in a childish fashion. So glad that I've managed to do this without insulting anyone. But yeah, I, I've i literally, for the whole of this week, had the Iron Brew advert. You can't equal the baby fanny. I've had that playing in my head. So everybody go off and search for that. It has to be on YouTube. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think Mary knows exactly how to <laughs> how to insult properly in Scottish. Um, Wendy, when we overuse the words, the loser, the regression, that's it exactly. Um, it's it's a friendly insult rather than an aggressive, horrible thing. So yeah, that makes sense as it goes down down the generation. Something that might really have offended your granny is just a bit naughty just now. Um, and well, yeah, mum. Mum, mum will agree with that as well. Not going to use the words, but she did. We do. She does have a family story about about the time that my dad calmly threw out a word that he didn't even consider rude in normal conversation to to Gran, and Gran was like totally shocked. So, yeah, what was what was shocking to one generation won't be the next. <laughs> I'll have to explain, Canny. <laughs> Yeah, that's just Scottish equivalent of cannot. Oh, and, and I nearly forgot Dunderheed. Dunderhead. <laughs> um, when we started on all of these things, we were talking about Scottish insults. And I can't remember who said that now. Hand, hands up who it was that said it, but, but Dunderheed. And um, then someone else had said, oh, that's really similar to the American word dunderhead. So heed and head are the same word in Scottish, but dunderheed is a fantastic insult for... some. Someone explain it. it it's just an insult. It's, do you know, it's a very similar to kind of fanny or something. It's just a bit, a bit stupid, though. <laughs> Extreme food reviews. I'm not going to read that one out, but Drew called you that in their very first conversation. That's an term of endearment in your country. <laughs> yes, that that's absolutely a term of it. Well, no, actually, it's it is a sort of well documented British thing that the ruder we are to you, the more likely we are to quite like you. So if you're getting called lots of insults and things then it probably is it it is a term of endearment whereas if we're incredibly polite to you then be really worried and that that's the thing you tend to find if someone's getting really really annoyed with someone then they'll get very clipped and very polite whereas if they're throwing out curses and insults then you're best mates so <laughs> so yes, it, it is a term of endearment, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, Dunderheed. Yes, exactly, Mary. Um, 
Wendy, I've been walking through life saying these things every time I can. I think that's a fantastic way to live your life, Mary. You totally should. And Von Frieda, what should I call you? Von Frieda Suzanne. Are you Frieda or Suzanne? Or... Extreme food reviews. Drew, Drew is clearly, he is totally in love with you. Yes, I'd, I'd be afraid. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I think out of all the English-speaking countries, Scotland does, does have a great range of insults. We're we're quite good at that, um, but it's probably a Gaelic-speaking, Gaelic-type thing. So, you you Cornish folks probably have your own your own list of extra insults, but we do have quite a range of insults, and sadly a very huge range like you know they say Eskimos have a hundred words for snow we Scots do have a lot of words for rain or rainy type weather because that's that's what what we get all the time it's one source of rain or another Suzanne thank you. thank you that makes a whole lot more sense I can I can remember Suzanne I did wonder if one Frieda could have been an awesome name I don't know Okay, so if you guys have any questions or anything, just pop them down just now. We will be winding this up before I start getting off off tangent and using some actual real swear words and embarrassing embarrassing family and getting myself demonetized. I'm actually really interested to see when this goes up on the replay what YouTube makes of it. And I want to see what the closed captions say for half the things I've said. Um that is going to be so much fun. If you don't know, quite um, Etsy or Etsy, no YouTube. We're on YouTube now. I get them muddled up all the time. YouTube has a system that is kind of speech recognition recognition that puts captions onto words, and voice recognition is never best for Scottish voices anyway. I don't have a thick Scottish accent but it still struggles with me but it's not the best anyway and sometimes I just look through these closed captions. I mean you should stick on the closed captions when you're watching a YouTube video sometimes and read them along with what the person's saying. The mistakes it makes sometimes are hilarious and I want to see what it thinks of Dunderheed. It's unlikely to have that in its dictionary, so I'm looking forward to having a look at that. Adrich is the best word to describe weather. Yes, um, Drich is the word we use the most to describe what's happening with the weather. Um, and it is, it's just damp and miserable and meh all in one go. And unfortunately that is what most of our days are like but yes I think it's a lovely word I don't know the history of it I'll have to look into that um yep I got lost here yeah so so guys again thank you all so much for joining me it's been a lot of fun uh don't forget to nip over and check out the shop we were looking at today uh, Karina's shop. I think it's awesome work and I'd love to give her a bit of support. She's supporting me and trusting in me so if we will go over and just give her a bit of love as well um, and I hope you'll have a great week. I've got some fun videos planned for the week. Hopefully, not hopefully, I will finish off this bleeding giraffe. He's looking fantastic but he's taking forever. Um, we might Wednesday Right, I've been waiting. I'm supposed to be getting um, a, tr a sample pack from a from a shop's new range, which was all exciting that they're they're launching the range and it was launched on April the first. So I was hoping to get this before to be able to show you it. So I'm still waiting for this to appear, but it's not appeared yet. So if I haven't got that to review, then we might do some eyes and eyelid felting. And Monday, I've got a little chat about promoted listings that I might even have some fancy animations. When I say animations, I don't mean animations at all. But I might, I might have something interesting for that. So, and Extreme Food Reviews, thank you so much. You have a great day too. I hope 
see time to leave i've lost my voice i hope everyone has an awesome day uh, thank you so much for joining me it's been a blast actually it's been good fun um and i will see you next sunday as well thank you so much mm -hmm.